G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. So here we are in the live desktop again on Ubuntu 1904. We're going to be installing to the separate partition that we created in Windows 10 with um, in disk management shrink volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrink the volume so we can install Ubuntu to a separate partition instead of alongside Windows. So that's right click the start menu and go to disk management. And then as you can see here we've got our C drive. If we click on C drive, right click and go to shrink volume. Now this is a, um, what can you say, a personal thing of how big you want the volume to be. What you've got here is the total size of shrink in megabytes size of available shrink so that's the size that you can shrink it to so you can make it that big if you want total size after shrink in megabytes so whether you want to make it so linux has enough space to be able to run and run uh, heaps of disk space then you can you can choose a large amount i'm just going <clears> to <throat> choose an amount that will um, i'm just going to go for the 60 gig so 61 440 which is what i normally do and then the total size after shrink in megabytes will be this. That'll be the window size. So this will be the space. So I'm just going to do a space of 60 gig um, to run Ubuntu. You can access your files in Windows if you want. I just want enough space to run Ubuntu here. But if you wanted to make it, say, 200, 300 gig, gig so you can you know, pretty much effectively run Ubuntu um, to do most of the things you want to do. You, you can still access your files in Windows from Ubuntu. You just can't do it from Windows to Ubuntu. So, And it says here you cannot shrink a volume beyond the point where any unmovable files are located. So let's just click on shrink. And now what we have is a 60 gigabyte unallocated space. So that's the space we're going to use to install Ubuntu to a separate partition rather than alongside. So now what we'll do is we'll install Ubuntu to that partition. So this uh, that's what this install is all about. So let's get on with it. English continue, keyboard layout English US, install third party which installs your codecs and your NVIDIA drivers if you have NVIDIA and so forth. Okay, so what we have here is um, because I've installed Ubuntu alongside, I didn't want to reinstall Windows 10 again um, because that would be a bit painful. But it tells you here this computer currently has Windows Boot Manager and Ubuntu 1904 on it. What would you like to do? Reinstall Ubuntu, erase Ubuntu 1904 and reinstall, erase disk and install Ubuntu. The erase disk would get rid of Windows and Ubuntu and start from scratch. So what we're going to do is something else. So if if this was um, if I didn't have Ubuntu installed alongside Windows 10, this would be asking the same thing again as it did in my previous video installing alongside Windows 10. Would um, install alongside Windows 10 would be the option here. We're going to do something else. It'll be the same thing anyway. So what we're looking for here is um, we're looking for the 60 gig that we um, created. So just looking through here, it looks like Ubuntu has actually um, installed itself to the partition that I created in shrink volume under Windows 10. I didn't expect that to happen. It's probably logical when you think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that. So this would have been, um, when I did the shrink volume in Windows 10, this would have been the free space. So yes, that would have been the free space. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add primary partition at 512 megabytes. It's going to be an EFI system partition. Okay. And then we're going to click the plus button again. And we're going to create uh, another primary 
with uh, 8192, which will be exactly 8 gig. Make that a swap area and OK. And then the rest of the free space, we are going to create another primary, ext4, and that will be the root mount point will be root for the Ubuntu operating system. Now, what we'll be doing here is, um, this is the EFI swap now. Now, I'm pretty sure there was no swap before. There was only, uh, there was no EFI system partition before. It would have been sharing with Windows Boot Manager somehow. So this is the better option because then it's not sharing with Windows. So if anything happens to go wrong with Windows, it shouldn't affect this one because it's separate from Windows. It's got its own boot partition. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the SDA5 for boot. We don't have control over that when we choose to install alongside. It just gets installed to whatever boot manager was there, which is the Windows boot manager, which you can see here, and it would have been inside of there. So um, we're going to use... Now, there's probably Ubuntu left over in that, but this, um, but that's only because um, that's the way I decided to do it on the first install. So on this one, uh, if, if it was only just Windows and we're just doing a, a direct system partition, then this is the way it would be. It wouldn't have shared with Windows in the first place. So SDA5, and we'll install now. So it's telling us what it's going to format for us, which is what we've told it to do. Let's continue. Australia, Perth, the usual. And let's continue. And that's the install of Ubuntu 19.04 complete. Uh, we shall start up having another look at the boot screen as well, like we did with the uh, alongside Windows install, and check out the boot menu as well. So we're going to fire up the computer um, and have a look at the boot screen after installing Ubuntu to separate data partition. So as you can see, you have the menu options there, Ubuntu, Advanced Options, Windows Boot Manager and System Setup. So it's exactly the same and uh, would have been exactly the same if we did it without Ubuntu being on there anyway. Um, it, would have, it will show up exactly the same way. Um, the only difference here is the Ubuntu partition is booting from a separate boot partition instead of the same boot partition as Windows. So that can have less issues if Windows 10 happens to change anything on an update with boot. It will not affect, it should not affect your Ubuntu booting at all because the boot, the boot managers are separate. So we'll just check out uh, the startup of Ubuntu. As you can see, it's starting up fine. Ubuntu does take a little while to start up on first boot. Uh, there we go. So we'll log in. So there we have it, Ubuntu installed to a separate partition created by Shrink in disk management in Windows. So we'll just um, restart that and we'll um, check out that uh, Windows is still booting just to confirm that. Windows Boot Manager, and there we have Windows Booting. So there's a couple of options there, but this one is my preferred option because being on a separate uh, boot partition to Windows has a huge, ad huge advantage if Windows does change its boot management on an update. And there we have the Windows 10 login screen. And there we are in Windows and everything is working as expected. So I'm very happy with that. We shall restart. Restart before an update comes through. 
and we will go back into the Ubuntu desktop where we will continue this video. Here we are in the um, freshly installed desktop of Ubuntu 1904 installed to a separate partition alongside of Windows 10. So as I said in the um, boot up video, um, this is my preferred method of uh, installing Ubuntu alongside of Windows 10 is to a separate uh, partition with a separate UEFI boot partition. Um, that way there are less issues when it comes to Windows 10 updates and it doesn't corrupt your Ubuntu boot partition if it's sharing the Windows one, which is what happens if you install alongside without a separate boot partition. So if we just have a quick look at uh, Gparted and we'll be able to see an EFI partition here, FAT32, which is the Windows partition, that one there. And that's where, when we install alongside, that's where the Ubuntu boot, the boot, uh, boot installer would have been uh, installed to, is this Windows boot EFI partition. So if, if Windows has an update and it corrupts the Ubuntu one, which I've known it to do in the past, then uh, you have to sort of, uh, it's a lot of messing around to go back and work out. Now, um, on here we have our FAT32 here, and Ubuntu is booting from this one. It's not sharing with the Windows one at all, and there should not be any issues. And I can confirm that. I've been running a HP laptop with Windows 10, and Peppermint, uh, Peppermint 8 or Peppermint 9. I might have even updated to 9 since 8. So I think I did. And I installed to the separate uh, um, boot partition because it was already there anyway. And it's been running for maybe 18 months, two years. Not one issue of booting have I ever had. And I've updated Windows quite a few times on that one. So I can confirm that this is a really good way of uh, doing it. It's a bit more complex, but um, it is better in the long run. That's the best option that I can see. So also if we go to file management, which I didn't show in my last video, and we go to other locations, you will see that uh, in um, here you've got a 935 gig volume, which is the Windows one. You've got your documents and settings. Um, PC TLC is the user that I set it up with. And you've got documents, downloads, and so forth. So there's all the stuff that I downloaded in Windows 10, which is um, Etcher, Rufus, OBS, all that stuff. It's all there. You can access from, from uh, Ubuntu Easy. You can uh, make a link. So if we did preferences, behavior and uh, show action to create link and if you went uh, create link for that and you cut that over to documents here and paste it uh, if we rename it to uh, see my windows downloads Then you can just go, so actually if we cut that and put it into download itself, and then we can just double click that. But now that the thing is there is you have to actually come here and click on that. And when you see the eject button, you know it's mounted. Now if, it's, if we unmount that, if I unmount that, and then I try to go to that downloads, as you can see, there's nothing there. But if I go to there and click on that volume, now it's mounted and then I can go to downloads and my Windows downloads and there's your shortcut within Linux and you're not using any data space in the Linux um, install which is only 60 gig you're actually using the 900 gig that's uh, taken up on the Windows volume so um, that's another way of doing it. or you can have a shared data partition if you want but that's an NTFS and you can use your Windows stuff there so that's just another way of doing it that was the Ubuntu install to a separate partition alongside Windows 10. 
Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it interesting and informative, and thank you for watching.